My name is Nick Gatfields. I'm chairman and CEO of Sony Music Entertainment UK. We have One Direction, the biggest pop artist in the world at the moment, uh, through to artists like Bob Dylan and Barbara Streisand, uh, great catalogue artists, um, Kings of Leon, uh, Pink, Justin Timberlake. Uh, our American company has Adele. The question is, how do I get the attention of a major record company? What you don't do is don't send anything in unsolicited. It's a complete and utter waste of time. And I'll give you an example. In the 27 years I've done this, I've signed one act through an unsolicited demo, which wasn't successful. So again, it's actually, you've got to start making a noise for yourself. So it's, again, social media. It's, it's making sure you have an online presence and making sure that you're actually putting your music out there. Doesn't matter in what form it is, make a noise online you know, then do some offline activity. So I won't sign an act now unless I can see there's been some sort of online presence. That's not because someone's doing our job for us. It's because if you haven't got the wherewithal to actually build an online community, you probably haven't got the drive to be actually make it as a successful recording artist. So that's key to me. So, you know, anybody just sends me a random piece of music on an email, with no thought attached to it. Same, same process as someone applies for a job with no thought attached to it. I'm not interested. Um, you know, I'll give you an example. We probably see, th we probably get around between three and 5,000 submissions a year across Sony, we may sign 20. So it's incredibly tough. The only artist that, that I'm interested in, it doesn't matter what sort of music you're making, you've got to make music which comes from you and it comes inside you. And either it's going to be commercially viable or it's not. But you know, you, you know, any artist who comes to me and says, I, I, I can do loads of things, what do you want me to do? Not interested in. I'm interested in artists who've got a single-minded vision. You know, it, it's much more about, I follow the artist's creativity and we provide a support service around that as opposed to we're inflicting our creative whims on it. Occasionally that happens because there's certain artists where there's certain parts of the market you can do that. But great long-term artists are you follow a vision and it's their vision. So be single-minded, be absolutely focused on what you want to do. Try and make something which is unique as well. I'm not interested in artists who come in and say, I'll sound a little bit like Muse. You know what? Muse is great. You know, I don't want somebody who sounds a little bit like them. Well, you see, I, I, I think it's, just, so it's a very popular thing to talk about. Who needs major labels anymore? You know, the, you know it's right now you can self-release. Yeah, of course you can self-release. But, you know, recent history is littered with companies who've been, you know, whether it's mp3.com or PeopleSound or whatever it is, which, you know, the service that we provide to a degree is there is a filtration and there is a curation component to that. So, um, so you know, how do you get noticed first coming in here, and that is by creating a digital profile for yourself, getting out there and being an artist. You know, you don't have to be spoon-fed by a major record label. Once you get signed there, and that's hard enough. You know, I always say to an artist, you know, if you get signed, you haven't made it. You've now got a chance. It used to be a very simple business. You know, the artist used to go into the studio, you made a record, we owned the factories, we owned the trucks, we took it to record stores and we serviced the radio, and you go hope and pray it works. Now, you've got to do all the groundwork before you even begin to go to what I call mass media. So, and the great thing is, you can find out very early on, you know, is this resonating? We put music to market very early on and start to build that community and you start to communicate with your audience to the point where mass media then starts pulling from you. They want to hear it. And that's really how you make it, frankly, these days, is it's, it's you just got to get the groundswell right. X Factor and all the talent show, but particularly X Factor because it's been so successful and continues to be hugely successful, actually is an incredibly viable channel to market for a lot of artists because, you know, I take One Direction as an example, who were created on the show um, in a pure pop sense, and about as pure pop as you could possibly get. There is no media out there right now. So how do you get the attention of 13-year-old girls? TV platforms, neither because radio is not going to embrace it. So, from that point of view, it's been a phenomenally successful platform for us. Um, it's also, if I look at last year's winner, James Arthur, James is, by any standard, a hugely competitive artist, a really, really talented artist. Um, and with you know, the a high degree of credibility, you know, I can say from artists who are coming out who are interested in working with him.
but frankly wouldn't have had the means uh, to get the attention of a major record company. I mean, you know, flat broke, living in a bed sit, North I mean, playing guitar, trying to get someone to pay attention to him. For that purpose, that show, you know, for him, that show absolutely delivered and served a purpose because you couldn't deny his talent when he was put in front of that platform. Well, in the music industry, sadly, you deal with more with failure than you do with success. Uh, because, you know, there, there is a, I always look at it, yes, it is like betting on horses in the A&R process. And I'll say that, you know, we may be experienced pundits, you know, but, but you still can't predict the jockey falling at the first fence. You have to be smarter about, you know, expect failure, frankly, and market, not market for failure, but market, keep your expectations completely realistic for the project. Because I think the hardest thing to do for an artist right now is to build a career for them. You know, you can have a hit, doesn't mean you've got a career there. So my view now is with artists is be smart about your expectations. Uh, you know, if your aspirations are, don't think you're going to hit it out of the park every time. That's my view. And be smart about the amount of investment you're putting around that and have that relationship with the artist where you go, look, you know what, well, this is a journey together. We're in a partnership. We both want the same thing. You know, we're making an investment in you because we believe you're talented, but there are so many things that need to happen for it to connect. And, and you know what? I would say, sadly, more often than not, they don't. We didn't really recognise this at the time, but I tell you what, there was a first indicator. They went to work, so we signed them. They went to work uh, uh, with uh, some Swedish writer producers. And I remember the Swedish company I called me and went, there are 200 kids outside the studio. And they haven't put a record out. I mean, like, no idea what was going on. There was like mayhem in Stockholm. And it's kind of like, something weird's going on here. And you'd see the same thing happen. You see pockets of interest developing in Italy, in sort of random markets. And what we really realised, actually, there's a consumption of X Factor online by a younger audience of UK X Factor online who have already embraced the band and got incredibly excited. So we chased that. There's a little fire developing and we just, you know, added fuel to that fire and took that same kind of, you know, I have to say a lot of credit goes to the Psycho team about delivering the digital plan because it's very much about, okay, we can see an opportunity here now. So we're going to actually evangelize these people. So the early adopters, find your evangelists, tell them to go out and build the community. We created a competition called Bring One D to Me on a global level, which is like, if you can get enough people supporting and shouting about it and we want the band, we will send One Direction into your market. And this thing became, you know, it was a virus. You just see it just spread out. And then the exciting thing, you saw it happen in America, exactly the same thing. And the thing which I found fascinating about social media and the way, again, the way our business has changed, we were very much used to be, we signed local talent and we marketed it locally, and then it would get a shot to go internationally. And well, what obviously digital has meant and social media has meant is, yeah, we largely signed locally based artists, but we market globally from day one now. Uh, and that's changed, and that's the exciting thing about the business.